So welcome to Mischief Monday. Actually, it's not too bad. It's just uh, crafty stuff as usual. Um, I'm going to attempt to make a custom size hoop for this today. I make um, a product that none of the hoops that I have work right. I have a giant hoop that will fit in, but it takes up so much stabilizer that it's a huge waste. So I'm going to attempt to make a custom sized hoop so I minimize my waste yeah, I can still make the things I want to make on that machine. Stick around. But this is the stitch area that I need, and this accounts for enough gap around it where the foot, you know, won't hit the framing. So I think I'm going to go with, with this size, and then I'll cut, what was that, about an inch, roughly? Yeah, about an inch wider as my frame, and then I'll cut the center out in here where, where this piece is and then I'll attach the brackets and hopefully that will achieve what I'm looking for. Now if I can just find a pencil. I lose pencils like I lose scissors. Three hours later. Can you move it along? I'm all out of time cards. Found one. We'll measure one inch in. We'll just go one inch. Just roughing in some lines here to kind of guide myself in the layout. I've never done this before. I've never seen it done before. So I'm just kind of winging it here. Not really a lot of planning. Maybe I should have planned before executing, but that's just not how I roll. I guess we'll go two and a half. But this whole center area will be removed and leaving us with this outer frame. And the maximum distance that my arms on my machine can be apart is like, I don't know, like 24 inches, I think. So I've got to account for that. This is the furthest these can be apart. It lines up at this end and this end. So center point, point is five. Use the little handy dandy centering marks on the hoop to center the bracket marks. I think that'll be our shape. I don't know. If I mess it up, I have more. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drill a hole to start my cut. Um, I'm gonna see how my jigsaw works. Check this thing out. I bought it from Fred Flintstone. If you don't know this, you get a drill bit that's just bigger than your saw blade. Cause all you're doing is you're drilling a hole so you can get your blade down in there and start. So that'll work. Turn the clutch off, turn it over to drill. And I'm doing this part first instead of cutting it out and then doing it, just so I have something to hang on to. This is a tailgate of my side-by-side, -side, so it's a really snazzy workbench. But it's the only spot that's sunny enough to be warm. So I'll just go here. Shockingly, this old thing doesn't have a treadle. It actually plugs in. Okay. Muffs, because I'm a total baby. I don't like loud noise. What? I'm just gonna support it, my body. So it doesn't bounce all over. So I'm gonna keep using the jigsaw. So am I yelling? What? Um, I'm just gonna drill a hole for the corners then, because I wasn't sure if I was gonna do a plunge cut with the skill saw or, or the uh, circular saw or what, but. Since that works so easily, I'm just gonna drill the corners and that way I can round them. There. Make sure my gate's out of the way, make sure the cord's out of the way. Okay, just 
gonna clean up the corners and stuff a little bit with the Dremel. There we are. So now we'll go back inside where it's warm and attach the brackets and give her a whirl. And the good part is this isn't going to wreck the hoop, wreck this hoop. All I'm doing is taking the hardware off. Not a big deal. It can just go back on. What I'm doing here is I need to make a spacer between so it drops the hoop down closer to the <clears throat> needle plate. So I've got a little half inch piece of plywood here. Again, like I said, this is all like trial and error because I've never built something like this before, obviously. I'm just gonna do this like this and then carefully drill through these holes just to mark the plywood. And then I can continue drilling through the plywood. I just don't wanna, I don't wanna wreck these holes too bad because, you know, there's not much meat there. This will go up here. I know it looks really fancy. Now I need longer screws. So get the holes drilled. And put your plate on. It should screw easily in. And I'm just screwing them in so that just a tiny bit of the screw sticks out the back. That way I can find this the holes here real easy so that's what you should have and then if this seems flimsy or anything I'll just put more like three more screws or probably even one whatever in the hoop back here so this doesn't rock and teeter and put unnecessary stress on the edge of this frame all right there we are got our <laughs> fancy fancy brackets on and just endless text messages. <laughs> Let's go see if this fits. Clicks right in. There we go. Perfect. Right here, see how the, um, scoot forward a little bit here, how the uh, stabilizer is touching the needle plate. It's like just, just a hair above it. Well, before I put the shims in, you know, it was like, this is half inch, this is quarter inch. So basically it was bouncing like three quarters of an inch off of the needle plate and uh, made the stitching suck. So now with that adjustment, it works. It works really nice. The lighting's not the greatest in the camera here, but so I'm going to stitch out some more and um, see if the fill stitches look as nice. embroidery hoop for the Redline machine. I'm sure you can do it with any commercial machine. Um, so if you run into a predicament where something you have doesn't fit in one of the hoops you have, now you have an option as long as your machine has the ability to stitch out in that area. So good luck and as always, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.